welcome back to Cruising Us Crew. My name is Lucy and today we are going to go through how to make sure that you get the best cabin possible on whatever cruise ship you decide to go on for your vacation. So when you've booked your cruise and you are choosing your cabin on board, there are four grades of cabin that you can choose from. Inside, ocean view, which has a window, balcony, which of course has a balcony, and suite. And within those grades, there are good cabins and there are not so good cabins. So the reason I'm making this video is to ensure that whatever grade of cabin you select for your cruise, you get the best cabin available. When I first started working on cruise ships, I was actually one of the people, I know I'm so sorry, who was like, don't really worry about your cabin. You're not going to spend much time in there, you're going to be exploring the ship, you're going to be exploring the ports, like it's, it is just a place to lay your head at night, so really don't worry about it too much. Until I took a cruise and I, oh my god, I chose the wrong cabin. And my whole view on the cabin topic changed for life. So the first thing to consider when choosing a cabin is you don't want any noise pollution you're gonna sleep in your cabin. So what you don't wanna do is select a cabin that is right next to an entertainment venue like the pool, the theater, the nightclub, because you're gonna hate your life. So the best thing to do to avoid this is when you select your cabin, you want to make sure that there are cabins next door on both sides, preferably above and below you, and even better, if they're opposite you as well. So you have cabins surrounding you on all sides. Yes, of course, there is a chance that you're gonna get a noisy neighbor, but a noisy neighbor isn't gonna even compare to being situated by the nightclub. The second thing to consider when you are choosing your cabin on your cruise, if you are worried about motion sickness, then it is imperative that you book a cabin in the middle of the ship. This is because when the ship moves, this is an awful, but when the ship moves, the middle of the ship moves the least. It's also gonna help the lower down you are. So if you are in midship deck six, that is gonna be better than if you are on midship deck 14. Again, the lower you are, the closer you are to the water, so the less you feel it, whereas the higher you get, the more the ship sways. So you want to be on midship on one of the lower decks if you are worried about motion sickness. And contrary to a lot of people's belief, you actually want to have a window or a balcony. You do not want to be in an inside cabin if you get seasick. Um, because being able to see the horizon and just that straight line helps with seasickness. There's a lot of other things that help with seasickness, which I've put into many other videos. But you do want a window or a balcony so that you can see the horizon. You want to be in the middle of the ship and you want to be on a lower deck. The other good thing about selecting a cabin that is in midship is you're going to be equal distance away from all the facilities because there's nothing worse than if you go on a cruise ship and most of the restaurants and the entertainment is at the front of the ship and your cabin is all the way at the back or vice versa. So at least if you have a cabin in the middle of the ship, you know that you're kind of equal distance away from everything. Something I've always found strange is that if you are booking a suite, the suites usually tend to be at the front or the back of the ship, which is wonderful for like the views and everything. However, if you get seasick, I would urge you to just choose a balcony cabin in the center of the ship and you're gonna enjoy your cruise a hell of a lot more. So those are some things that you can do to ensure you get the best cabins on offer within whatever grade you choose. But what are some things that you need to do to avoid getting the worst cabins within whatever grade you've chosen? So when you are selecting your cabin, you will most likely have a deck plan to look at. If you don't have a deck plan to look at, you can just go on Cruise Mapper or even Google your cruise ship's deck plan and there will be one on Google Images. Take a look at the deck plan and see where the cabins are situated. Because you might be thinking, okay, well, we'll go on a cabin that is on deck six midship for the motion sickness. But actually, if you look at your cruise ship's deck plans, you might find that on deck six midship, there is a casino. There was on Virgin, deck six midship, the casino was there. You don't wanna be by the casino because it is going to be noisy. So if that is the case, maybe it would be better to stay on deck five midship or even deck 
eight midship. Yes, it's higher, so you're gonna feel a little bit more motion. However, I think that's worth it to not get the noise. Also, a top tip is look out for crew areas on that deck plan. You don't wanna be in a cabin next to crew areas. Um, crew areas are not carpeted, which means that noise reverberates through and you basically hear everything. And also there is like 24 hour food service that you know the crew offer and many other 24 hour services that crew members offer. So they're gonna be coming in and out of crew areas all the time, definitely during the day, but at night as well. So if you select a cabin that is right next to a major crew door, that might be just as noisy as if you were next to the nightclub. So really do stay away from choosing a cabin that's anywhere near a crew area. On most cruise ships, crew cabins are on the lower decks of the ship, at the front and the back of the ship. This is because it's basically the worst place to stay, so of course they're going to put the crew members there over the paying passengers, quite rightly. But my point is, if the crew are staying at the front and the back of the ship on the lower decks, maybe don't stay at the front and the back of the ship on the lower decks if you can help it. Um, this is because if you are at the front of the ship on the lower decks, hearing that anchor drop every morning, it might not be every morning because it depends whether you sail into port or whether you drop anchor, but if you do hear that anchor drop, my god, the whole room vibrates. It might not vibrate as much as a crew cabin because again the crew cabins will be closer to where the anchor is situated, but you will know about it. Uh, and again, if you are at the back of the ship, most of the time the crew bar is on the lower decks at the back of the ship. So you might get the noise from the crew bar. When you book a cruise, you are most likely going to have two options. You can choose your grade of cabin inside Ocean View Balcony or Suite and then let the cruise line situate you. So decide what exact cabin you are going to stay in or you can pay a premium and select your exact cabin. So you select the grade as well as where that cabin is. Similar to if you're going on a plane, you know, you can book a seat on the plane, but if you want to like, say I want to sit in 23A, you have to pay a premium. It's exactly the same as that. And like being on a plane doesn't really matter where you sit unless you're going on with a family. However, being on a cruise ship, it really, really does matter where your cruise ship cabin is situated for the reasons that we have been through. It's no good choosing a lovely ocean view cabin, but then they choose the ocean view cabin for you that is right at the front of the ship. So I would always recommend paying that extra premium and selecting your exact cabin. Now, when you get on board your cruise, you may be offered an upgrade. So what I'm gonna say with this, if you have just selected your grade of cabin, but you did not pay the premium, and you just let the, you just let the cruise line decide where your cabin was gonna be, accept the upgrade, like why not? Accept the upgrade, have the nice cabin. If you have paid the premium and taken the time to select your exact cabin, I would decline the upgrade, and here's why. Let's say you get seasickness. So you have selected an ocean view cabin on deck six midship, right? And you're really excited about it. And then you come on board and they say, hey, we can upgrade you to a balcony cabin. If you take the upgrade, you might find that that balcony cabin is actually at the front of the ship. So while the room might be an upgrade, the location might not be, or they could put you in a balcony cabin underneath the gym. So every morning you are gonna hear um, the stomping on the treadmills or the nightclub. So do you see what I'm saying? So although at first it sounds lovely that you're getting an upgrade, the cruise line are actually offering you the crappier cabins of that grade. Do you see what I'm saying? Like at the beginning when I said no matter what grade, there are good cabins and there are bad cabins. There are good balcony cabins that are in the middle of the ship, surrounded by other cabins, and there are bad balcony cabins that are directly under the gym. And 
this goes back to that. So you can accept the upgrade, but you might find that you regret it because of the location. But when you are offered an upgrade, you of course can say, well, where, like, where would you put us? And can you show us on the deck plan? And you can decide then and there. But I would just be quite wary because, as I said, although the room might be an upgrade, the location might actually be a downgrade. One of my best tips for having a good cabin, actually, Every cruise ship will offer wheelchair accessible cabins in every grade, inside ocean view, balcony and suite. Oh well, I mean not suite, because suites will be big enough anyway, but there will be accessible cabins within like the lower grades of the cabins. So of course once you are on board, all the cabins are booked up, like everyone who's going to come has come. So I would actually ask the question if there is an accessible cabin available. The reason is, although the accessible cabins are the same price as the non-accessible cabins on the same grade, they are twice the size. Of course the accessible cabins have to be reserved for people who need them, but if, they, but if the accessible cabins aren't fully booked, then there's no problem that you asking the question. If they're fully booked, they are fully booked. But if they're not, and they're gonna go unused, you may as well be in a cabin of the same grade that is twice the size. You see what I'm saying? Um, like, it's quite incredible actually how, how much bigger accessible cabins are than just the regular cabins. Understandably, but you know what I mean. So, try it, give it a go. But anyway, those are my top tips on how to make sure you get the best cabin possible no matter what grade you choose. Um, if you are going on a cruise, which I assume you are and that's why you've clicked on this, I really hope uh, you have a great time and thank you for watching and I really hope this video helps and if you do do anything that I mentioned in this video and it works for you then let me know and I'll see you in the next video guys. Bye!